You've probably found this video because you yourself are looking for a cheap and capable CNC mill. Well this is my mill, it's an Optimum MH28V I purchased new about two years ago for approximately 1800 US dollars. Over the course of six months I converted it to CNC using some NEMA 34 steppers, some Taiwanese ball screws, and all up this cost around about 2900 US dollars. So this is what the mill looked like when I pulled it out of the crate and then I snapped a couple photos of me doing the machining necessary to fit the ball screw for the x-axis and otherwise it was fairly straightforward just making mounts up for the bearing end supports. So the plan for today is to put this mill to the test on this 40mm by 40mm square stock it measures approximately 150 millimeters long so this is the model I've whipped up for this test it has a square, a circle, a slot and a little protruding boss all of these features are 6 millimeters in depth and as you can see I'm using a different optimal load for all of these different profiles so the first one is 0.8 millimeter width of cut followed by the second profile, the circle, being 1mm width of cut and then the slot and the boss are both 1.2mm width of cut obviously I've crept up on this so as to start off successfully and I can always abort if we run into chatter and rigidity problems early on once I've roughed the part out with a 2D adaptive I'm going to finish all the floors off with a 2D pocket toolpath and then use a 2D contour and machine all of the walls for a better surface finish. And here is the end mill I will be using for the test today. It is a 6mm solid carbide straight from China. These cost about $8 and we will see if it works a treat. This is almost an unofficial review for this end mill. The tool holder I will be using is a knockoff Tormach style um, tool holder. It has a 3 quarter inch shank on it and uses ER20 collets. So the key here is to ensure that the end mill is nice and tight in the collet and also to make sure it is not sticking out any further than need be. This will aid in making the whole setup a lot more rigid and could reduce a lot of potential chatter that we could run into later. As you can see here, an extreme example is the more stick out you have, the more deflection you're gonna get. So this is my 150 millimeter vertex vise. I set it up using a dial indicator across the jaws, although I didn't catch this on camera as it's not all that interesting. After placing the end mill holder in the spindle, I quickly use the torque wrench and torque it up to 19 newton meters. What you're looking at here is I'm quickly touching off on the corner of the part. I would use an edge finder for this, but because this is just a test, I'm not too fussed about marking up the edges of the part, and it requires one less tool change. What you're seeing now is about 10 times speed and I'll temporarily slow it down so you can see machining in real time although I'm sure you don't want to watch the whole thing take half an hour so I'll speed it back up to 10-12 times whatever it is and quickly face off the part for you as you can see here my coolant sprayer or mist coolant isn't actually that easy to set up it's very requires a lot of finessing to get it to spray a constant stream without overdoing it or not putting any mist out at all. What you're seeing now is the 0.8mm width of cut. This is the first time I've actually machined any steel on this mill. So I was, as you can say, a little bit nervous. 
you know, preparing for the worst, broken in mills and lots of chatter and heinous sounds, but it seemed all went well from the get-go. It also seemed that the mill didn't mind whether it was taking a 08 millimeter or even a whole millimeter width of cut. And this was the cut I was most worried about, the 1.2 millimeter width of cut. But the machine showed no signs of chatter and performed flawlessly like the previous two cuts. The machine is doing quite well in my opinion for only weighing 240 kilos and here you can see a little bit of a cock up where the stock was slightly larger then I entered it into fusion and I end up taking about a two and a half millimeter cut across the back face of the stock and the machine didn't even notice it which was quite amazing I was thinking I was either going to run into some extreme chatter or snap the end mill worst case scenario but the machine seemed unaffected and carried on without any damage to the end mill. Now this is where the machine comes in and does a very light pass on all of the floors of all of the features to give a slightly nicer surface finish and a prettier looking pattern. So for all of this I have left 0.1mm radial stock to leave which means that the end mill never comes into contact with any of the walls of the part. This will be taken care of later in the next operation where the end mill will carry out a contour around all of the walls on the part. For the contour I have left 0.1mm axial stock to leave so the end mill doesn't touch the floor of the part. And I've done all of this in an effort to achieve a slightly better surface finish on the floors and walls of the part. As you can see here, I'm pretty happy for my first time machining steel and the surface finish actually feels great. There's no lips, no burrs, although close up, it doesn't look that great. But I can assure you, it definitely feels very smooth to the touch. And here you can see a little cock up I made when deburring the part, but in hindsight, I probably should have deburred the whole thing in the mill with a chamfer tool, but ah well. So next up, we have to actually verify the dimensions of the part. So for this, we're going to use my Michitoyo digital calipers. They're pretty sweet, pretty accurate. We've got my bore gauge. And what we're going to do here is just verify the accuracy of the calipers for shits and giggles. And as you can see, with a tiny amount of light pressure, they come in bang on 25 millimeters. As most people know, you can manipulate calipers to read whatever dimension you're looking for by either providing too much or not enough pressure. Although after a while, you develop a bit of a feel for this and you kind of learn how to avoid it. So this square recessed feature is actually meant to measure 30 millimeters by 30 millimeters. Although, as you can see, the part actually measures about 29.77. So we're talking about roughly quarter of a millimeter undersized now. The reason I think this is, is because I didn't actually take a spring pass and I usually do this on aluminium and it does actually remove a great deal of material 
In hindsight, I probably should have done a spring pass on the steel and we'd probably be looking at a dimension much closer to 30 millimeters as I haven't really been this far out of spec on any of the aluminium that I have machined in the past. And what you'll see over the course of me measuring the part is everything is out by roughly 0.2 to 0.3 millimeters at the most and it's very consistent. So I definitely believe it was the tool deflection causing this. And I do know this is not the most accurate method for measuring any of this, but this is just a test of my, you know, cheap CNC mill, so I'm not that stressed. In the next couple of weeks, I'll chuck out a video of machining the crankshaft as I have all the pieces now. It's all sitting there just waiting for the time of day for me to finally get my ass into gear. It'll be a case of working out the balance factor and pressing it all together and then placing it into the engine. And then after that, I've probably only got 1% of the work to do, but as we all know, it takes about 99.9% .9 of the time to do that 1% of the work. And if you found you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, even leave a comment if you have any questions. And yeah, see you next time.